and I don't know who Denny was pitching against, but all of a sudden, Dick, he was our catcher, and he calls, time out. And he comes out to the mound. And so I was an infielder. We had a little meeting on the mound, and Dick says, listen, Denny, when I call a fastball, I want you to call, throw that fastball. And Denny said, well, that was my fastball. And Dick said, Chuck, warm somebody up. <laughs> Katie Casey was baseball mad. She had the fever and she had it bad. Just to root for the hometown crew. Every cent that Katie spent. On one Saturday, her young boy called to see if she'd like to go to see a show but miss kate said no i'll tell you what you can do start off by talking about the history of Sheboygan's baseball. The first official game in Sheboygan where the team had uniforms was in 1886. And then the next year was the first year, 1887, that had Sheboygan on the uniforms. In 1890 was when Billy Lebo came to town and started the team that was to be called the Chairs. And they went until about 19, they were called the Chairs until 1946. And then in the 30s, that's when Hauser came and John Puzzlewitz and Buck Krauss and all those guys. And then in the 40s, they got affiliated. 1940, they got affiliated with the uh, American Association of Milwaukee Brewers. And that lasted until 47 when uh, Brooklyn Dodgers, uh, they became affiliated with the Brooklyn Dodgers. And that was then the Indians. So that's, the Indians actually were named in 1947. Piece it all together, a lot of history of A lot of history in baseball. A lot of Let's tie in the Sheboygan A's, the early years when the team first got started, which was after the Kingsbury team. Kingsbury became the number one club in Sheboygan in 53 and 4 after, after the Indians left. And they were very good. It was an amateur team. They had some great teams. And they were sponsored by the brewery, obviously. And uh, that lasted until 1962. That's when the brewery stopped sponsorship of the Kingsbury team. And there were a bunch of guys. Uh, uh, I think we, we credit Del Olschmidt and Chuck Seichert and uh, Bob Dortman and uh, Bobby, Ayers. Bobby Ayers, probably Carl Beringer, uh, with actually starting. We met after this. I remember the meeting. We were sitting at Evergreen Park, and we were talking about what we are going to do next year. And You had known at that point that King Cole was King not going to be sponsored. King Cole was done. Yeah, he was not going to sponsor. What we were going to do, and we decided we were going to play. We had a team in 1963. It was our first team. When people hear the term Sheboygan A's, they think Danny Moyer. I mean, that's just automatic, but in the early years, uh, that wouldn't have necessarily been the case. At what point, Denny, did you assume a, a leadership role? And Chuck Seichert never got enough credit for what he did to get the A's going. He was uh, the GM. He signed it. In fact, he went into his own pocket plenty to pay the bills in that 63, 64, 65. And then in 1965, we were playing in a Plymouth tournament for third place or something, and a couple guys didn't show up. We forfeited that game. We forfeited a couple after that. And then in 1966, we didn't have a team. And then we pretty much reorganized. They named me general manager. Let's talk about the ballparks that the A's have played in. Well, we started off at Legion Memorial Park, uh, and that was falling apart. I mean, it was yeah, rat right. infested and rotting timbers and everything. And it was about to be condemned. And then American Orthodontics bought the property, and we're going to turn it into a factory. 
And he let us play there two years after he made that decision. And the city decided to build Wildwood Park. But in the interim, 1980, we played every game on the road. Original park was built in 1981, was the first year of the new park. Then we, we contributed about $30,000 to that. And of course, we had a pretty viable program, you know. So the city really felt an obligation to build a park. And of course, we did some, some campaigning and lobbying and, and got it. But we helped raise some money, helped do the design work and did some things for them. But uh, then that was 1981, was the first year we played there. And then in 1998, that's when we put, did all the renovation. That's when, what that's when the loan came into to play. And we did the whole new grandstand and the bathroom the skybox and the expanded the concession stand and all that. Now you were able to burn the note two seasons ago? Yeah, two springs ago we got rid of that note and started another one. Now we're in Hawk another $170,000 because we, <laughs> we had to get rid of that backstop and the dugouts were, it just had to be done. We had no choice. So we, uh, new screening, new netting, uh, new dugouts, and um, it's really a pretty ballpark. The main goal is eventually getting new lights. The lighting system is not, as you well know, right. is, is not good at all, and that's an extremely expensive proposition. That's something that, uh, that has to be done, and we're thinking in order to do that, we'd like to build a new scoreboard because we can generate revenue by selling ads on a big fancy right. scoreboard right. that will help us with the other job. So we're kind of getting that in gear, trying to get that done. With that, we're going to step out for a minute. When we come back, uh, Denny and Donna will be talking a little bit about a family affair. Whenever somebody would get a, a little bleeder of a hit, uh, we ended up calling those Diener hits. <laughs> it always looked like he hit the ball with a rolled up newspaper, but uh, he seemed to make contact pretty good, but uh, was really, and really a good team and fun to play with. Local government, local educational institutions, and local community members all use cable access TV to communicate their message. They depend upon it as an affordable means of outreach. Public educational and government access television empowers local government agencies, individuals, and groups to use the media to speak directly to their constituents in a more direct and cost-effective way. Make sure everyone has a voice. Support your local PEG channels. What teammate I remember the most about is, of course, Gene, because Gene and I have been best friends since that day that he recruited me to play with the Hayes. 25 years, a lot of great teammates, and uh, almost, you know, many of them are in the Hall of Fame. But I have to say, Lee Wettenkamp was the best ball player I played with. This segment we're going to call the uh, family affair, and it involves more than just the Moyer family because you also have a team and a club family. Uh, how does that all fit in? Well, I think that uh, because we rely so much on each other to get things done, we've, we've kind of a pretty closely knit group. Scott has been the president for the last several years. He seems to have taken the presidency of the A's to a different level. We've had some really dedicated people over the years, but he's got a kind of a, a business background. He's got an air of professionalism about him. He's not afraid to go out and beat on doors and ask for money. He's not afraid to keep order at meetings. He just does a great job. Talk about the Moyer family and how they've uh, been involved with the program, well, including your daughter. Right. <laughs> well, you know, over the years, in order for my children to see their father, <laughs> well, I mean, when you think about it, he started out for 25 years. He was a sports writer, so that was weekends and nights. Um, and he also was general manager of the Sheboygan Red Wings football team. So this was just what we had to do to see him. David and Tim both played with the A's right. along with playing in high mm -hmm. school, so they're Correct. players too. Yeah, so they have, you know, knowledge from all aspects. And then my daughter Debbie came along and she ended up be, being a singer, a national anthem singer. So, you know, she put her little two cents in it. We had one night, Marty, where my wife and my mother-in-law were in the concession stand, Debbie sang the national anthem, Tim played third base, and David managed. Of course, I was, what did you do? Thing, I was doing my thing in the press <laughs> box. There's a whole lot that you do, Donna. Talk about the different jobs that you've performed over the years and are presently doing with the ball club. There's so much background stuff involved in this organization that people don't know. They go to the game and that's what they see. But when the game is over, he has to do the stats so that the next day when there's a game, there is an updated insert in the program and so he's up typing late at night 
And when it's, you know, one in the morning, you're not too sure what he's typed. So you definitely have to proofread that. So you're <laughs> so a proofreader too? I'm a proofreader. We have monthly bingos and um, concession stand. There's so much involved in getting that concession stand together because the scheduling, and thank goodness for the diamonds, because those parents do work all of our home games. You have to order it, you have to stock it, you have to clean it. So there's a lot involved besides just selling the food. Can't go without mentioning his wife, Donna, who has been there every step of the way and supportive and, and in her own right, putting forth a lot of time and effort. How are the diamonds involved with these? Well, financially, we pick up their, <clears throat> the cost of their insurance policy. They're covered under our policy. Uh, we run youth nights for them. They have a night that the, the Diamond kids come out to a game and they partner with the A's. You know, they, one of their pitchers goes out on the field with our pitcher and their catcher and their outfielders and stuff. And so they're introduced before the game. They get a big kick out of that. They really feel good about it. It's really that. a good way to keep, keep them together and keep mm -hmm. the parents you know what we're doing. And then we treat them up in the skybox. If the skybox happens to open that night, we buy them some pizza and soda and stuff. So they, they feel like they're being treated a little special. And, and they, it's making a difference. We've got a couple, three, four players now who came up through the Diamonds that have turned out to be pretty good players. I don't know if they necessarily fall underneath the uh, athletic club's umbrella, but uh, they're certainly part of Sheboygan baseball, and that is the Legion team. Uh, are they involved in any way with the club and could be called a family? We're getting, part of the family? We're getting closer and closer because we're, they, they need us because of the ballpark situation. We need them because they're our feeder team. And we're, our relationship is getting much, much better. It never was bad, don't misunderstand right. here, but it's just that uh, we're beginning to realize how badly we need each other. And um, they have really come a long way these last few years in terms of organization. Their parents group, and they've reorganized a couple of times now, and they're really doing a nice job. They've had some good leadership these last few years. So I think I'm, I'm glad to see that. I'd like to see more of that. I'd like to see... Uh, I'd like to see uh, the high school baseball booster clubs and the Legion booster club and the Diamonds parents and our group really turn into one big massive organization. I think that that'd be the best for Sheboygan baseball. I would imagine over the years, you know, when you think about the people that come into the park and uh, there are certain fans that, you know, are there pretty much year after year. They're part of the family too. Oh yeah, absolutely. And they come to our banquet uh, when they can and they're at the game whenever they can be there. And, we actually started the last couple of years a Fan of the Year yeah, award. Yeah, was, was going to bring that up. Yeah, it's, um, you know, some of our regulars who have gotten it in the last yeah, couple of years. Yeah, it's been there a long time. Uh, and we do the same thing with some of our um, members where we give Club them um, golden a. the Golden A Award. Correct. But this fan thing, I'm glad you mentioned that. We're talking about our family and, and you know, we're talking about our fundraising and our sponsors, but we, we don't have fans. We don't have a team either. You know, they're there all the time. They're... They're hollering rally and they're getting us going. This past year, our members really dwindled down because we had, was it five or six of them that yeah, had six. died? And um, they were core people. Yeah, we lost her mom, we lost Gates Gear, we lost Snipe and Vigo, we lost Dick Schneider. Darlin uh, Weisman. We lost Darlin Weisman, who was just invaluable. And uh, of course, Chuck, so we, it was a tough, tough year for us. When we come back, we'll have Denny talking about uh, some of the players, former players, teams, and uh, opponents of the Sheboygan A's. So stay tuned. I guess it's probably the most fondest memory I have is probably just meeting all the different guys. The camaraderie we had with all the players and the time after the game as well as during the game, and getting around, joking, having fun, and uh, it was just fun thing to do for your whole summer. Bacteria is the leading cause of tooth decay, which is the number one chronic childhood disease. Ugh, that ain't no fairy tale. What? Tell the kids of America how to prevent tooth decay. Do I get a superhero costume? A tooth fairy? Kids of America. You gotta brush them, floss them, and rinse them twice a day. Visit the dentist and go to americastoothfairy.org to help rescue a kid from pain. Let's get her done. <laughs> the Legion Park was probably like Wrigley Field. Um, it's got the mystique, it had the, the brick walls and the vines going up and the tree in right center field but it also had thousands of rocks in the infield and the, 
Yeah, the lips on third and first were terrible. Let's start off with the players that have played with the A's. Who would you classify as your best players? Well, Lee Wettenkamp comes to mind as being probably, probably number one or close to it. Jason Bartelt is right there. And, of course, Gene Mann, who's just been a tremendous player for us for years and years and years. Those three guys, Dave Gear, um, has got to be one of the top guys. We've had so many. I made a list of some guys. Charlie Comey, Rick Rice, right. Ron Hare, you know, those guys. I remember that um, one season Rick had. Boy, he was just uh, outstanding. He was, I mean, to the yeah. point where he thought he might get some kind of a look from the major leagues, which yeah, didn't happen. Was, but. See, and there's a guy, too, that never had the benefit of high school baseball. If we'd had high school baseball, he probably would have signed. We'd have probably never seen him. Left-handed pitcher could run and throw like crazy, hit the ball out of the park. One game we played Cedarburg, he beat, pitched a three-hitter or something, shut him out, hit a home run, and won the game. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> one enough. Yeah, really. He had a great. He was a good player. But I would say those guys, and there's so many of them. Charlie Comier is a good player. Tom Graham's a good player. Um, and and lately, uh, well, Randy Wilkie. My goodness, again, Randy and Ron and all those kids that won that first year. Um, there's just so many of them. It's so hard to come up with names. And these last few years, you know, we've had some, Clay Schwartz was there for a number of years, was a good catcher, and now we've been stocked with these UWM guys a couple of times. Timmy Patsman's as good a player as we've ever had. And Who are some of the kids that came in and played with the A's and went on to sign uh, contract, contracts? I looked it up just before we came. We've had 30 different people that have played professionally. Some oh. before, like Ron Hare, before they came to us, mm -hmm. but for the most part after they left us. And we've had two guys uh, play in the big leagues, uh, Jack Tashner and, and Jared Washburn. A couple of pitchers. Washburn started a World Series game. So yeah, he's, that's you know. pretty amazing. There were uh, four different championship teams. Uh, in 68, you won the Land O'Lakes League championship, yep. and then uh, there were three state league championship teams. 68, we won the Lakes League. Uh, we lost in the Grand Championships. We won our Northern Division. And that was with Rick Rice and Ron Hare leading the way that year, Charlie Cometer and Dick Larson. And, and then we had a, a very good team in 71. We didn't, we didn't win anything, but we got to the quarterfinals of the state tournament. That was a good ball club. And then uh, we didn't win it. In 81, we had a good team. But we didn't win a championship again until 1991. And that was, um, we call it the class of 86, uh, kind of came together. Ron Wilkie and Kenny Nasey and Tom Gardner and Gary Fritch and all those kids. Along with Gene Mann and Wet and Camp, we had some, we had a great blend of experience and, and young people, and it all through it just that team was 49 and nine. <laughs> David ran that team. I'd probably say that my fondest memory with the A's uh, had to have been the first state league championship we won, 1991. Um, something that we hadn't done previously that uh, was a, a priority, and I think Denny Moyer had seen it coming together. Uh, for a number of years, but that was finally the year that everything culminated, had the right mix of veterans and younger players. And then we won it again in 97. Uh, that was when Jason Bartelt and those guys first came up, and we had good pitching uh, that year. Um, and then again in 2000. 2000 was when the two Holstein kids, Mike Casper and Jeff Lefebvre, Casper was like 13-2 and two or so, and, and Lefebvre was 12-0. and 0. And we had Wilkie and Bartel, Tom Eckert. I don't know if yeah. I mentioned Tom Eckert. was an outstanding player. Mm -hmm. So we've had some great kids over the years. If you were to classify them or rank them, who would be your biggest uh, rival and why? Well, in the early years, it has to be the Blue Ribbons because they were just, I mean, they were a step above everybody. They were outstanding. I mean, that was our biggest chief rival in the state league when we started out. It was... Denny Rue up there put together quite an assemblage of people that, you know, better players than we had and was always the team to beat. These later years, uh, Lombard is just, uh, and some of our older players won't even relate to Lombard, but they've just been so dominant these last few years. He's, he's out of the Chicago area. He's, he knows all the coaches. He gets top-notch kids, you know. Out of the different colleges. The different colleges. And he's been good. Janesville, you know, Clawitter and those guys for years were a good team. Madison uh, in the 80s was a good team. The Janesville Aces in the State League, we had a, a terrific, uh, respectful competition against. Can't say it was always uh, lovey-dovey, so to speak. Madison Anchor had a lot of the Big Ten ball players from Madison on it, and they had a very, very good team. And uh, a lot of good left-handed pitchers. Uh, Looking at managers, who comes to mind? 
Well, Denny Rue did a lot more than that, though. He kept it together. And there's a lot to be said for showing up every year, you know, keeping, right, keeping exactly. your guys together. And they were together for a long time, a long time. And the same with Chuck, you know. he was. People say, well, he wasn't that good a manager. He was that good a manager. But he held things together, and that, that makes you a good manager just in itself. When you're an out-of-town player, and you're the first one, uh, you know, it puts a lot of pressure on a manager. And Chuck handled it so well. I felt like I was a hometowner right from the start and, and ended up being my home team. And it was a home team for 25 years. I never felt... Uh, and I, and I give a lot of credit to the manager for uh, you know, how he handled it. And Chuck Diker did a heck of a job with that. I think my son was as good a manager as we've ever had. He, he, he knew the game. He understood people. He was tough when he had to be tough and fun when he had to be fun. And he, I think he did a good job. I'm, I'm sure I'm prejudiced. But. We're going to step out again. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the present day Sheboygan A's organization. My fondest memory of playing with the A's was probably winning the state league championship in 1991. No question that if you play long enough you hope you win the championship in 1991 after 20 years we finally accomplished that when you're behind the wheel always watch for people walking and biking it's Wisconsin law to give bikes at least three feet when passing in Wisconsin, the laws are the same for bicyclists and motorists. So if you bike, ride with the traffic and obey stop signs and lights. People ride bicycles to go places, get exercise, reduce pollution, save money, and have fun. Watch for people riding bikes when you're driving. Share and be aware. We're all responsible. Legion Park had, had, had a lot of charisma and it was a great place, great place to play, but I was a home run hitter and uh, you know, 435 in the left field, left center field corner versus 365, 370 at Wildwood. Um, there's no question. Of Welcome back. Denny, let's talk about the present day Sheboygan A's and uh, I'm not the only one that thinks this by the way, is what happens to Sheboygan A's baseball when Denny Moyer retires or is gone? I think we'll sustain it. I think I think there's enough people that care enough about it to um, to get it going. You know, we started, we did our new constitution years ago, and we've pretty much followed that. We've got our committee structure set up, and we've got some tremendously dedicated people. You know, that's the one thing I don't like about this, Marty, is everybody calls it Denny Moyer's team and Denny Nias, but we've got not only people but families, you know, the Berkovitzes and the Schraders and all oh, the Brzonic family and the Hinzies and, and, and leaving some out, there's tons of them mm -hmm. that are just down there that they don't say no to you. You call them and you ask them, can you get this done? They get it done. You know, can you help us tonight? Can you help us a bingo? Can you do the concession stand? Can you get some water off the field? They just, they just show up and do it. Really dedicated people. So I think if I drop dead tonight or something, I think that it would continue. I really do. Talk a little bit about what is involved in running the Sheboygan A's? And I'm talking about, and, and Donna has mentioned this, you know, you're down in the basement night after night working on things for the A's. What are you doing? Well, it starts in January with fundraising. You know, it takes a lot of money. We're on a $200,000 budget here, pretty much year in and year out. So we, we get all our letters out, we get people going, and we're talking to college coaches all the time, getting our team lined up getting our personnel managers lined up, getting the field lined up. And, and uh, between Eric Leisman and Terry Berkowitz, I've just kind of let that alone. Those two guys are just getting that done for us. Um, that's the start. Then cleaning up the ballpark every year, getting things ready, lining up uh, scheduling for concessions. Getting ready, you mean uh, field preparation, field prep. screens up, the Yeah, signs and up. Scott and his group go out there with the power washers and get all, you know, it's just mm -hmm. all of that stuff has to be done. Um, so there, it's a big job, um, just just to get ready for the season. And once the season starts, there's all kinds of issues. We have got enough people, and it all has to rain. You know, it's always got to rain. So you're messing around with that, and calling umpires, and calling concession people, and and worried about the other team going to show up, and you know, and getting all the nights lined up. We have we have about 40 different group nights every year, and that takes organization. You know, that's what you do down in the basement all night is get things organized. It's his true avocation it's not his vocation but his avocation uh, you know if you go to his house in the middle of winter you know he's down in his basement office if we're now into the season and it's game night in Sheboygan what's involved in organizing a night at the ballpark for the community 
Well, first of all, it's making sure you got a game. Umpire's got to be there. The other team's got to be there. Your guys all have to show up. The equipment's got to be there, the bats and the balls. The PA's got to be working. The scoreboard's got to be working. Concession stand has to be operating. You've got to have somebody at the ticket window. You've got to have the park's got to be cleaned up. You've got to have somebody lined up to run the games on the field for the kids. Uh, you've got to have announcers lined up. You've got to have all these things going. So it can be a circus. Somebody's got to do the frying in the backyard, set up for the tailgate parties, and tear down for the tailgate parties, and, and all those things. It's a, it's a big opera. It's a circus. It's like putting the tent up and taking it down every night. That's kind of what it amounts to. Yeah, game night is a, a big event for our, for our entire organization. I mean, the, the, the fans see the game on the field and what goes on in the field with the games and the other activities that we do. Uh, but there's a lot that goes behind that. But again, it's not all me. I mean, we have different people that just take care of things and, and it gets done. Somehow this all gets done. And what's involved with the fundraising? It's sustaining the program is foremost. We're never going to pay off the park note if the team folds. So we've got to keep the team on the field every year, and that's, that's pounding on doors, selling those ads and selling season tickets and getting people out to the park and hustling group nights and getting, getting that done. And then we, we do as much as we can in terms of big fundraising. We're beating on doors. We're contacting people. We're asking for help, and um, hopefully we'll get it done. The, the golf outing, we've had it now for 10 years, and it's one of our, I would say, outside of bingo and the, the money that we make at the park on game day, it is the next biggest fundraising event for the, for the, for the organization. And the Diamonds program, you know, their kids are getting good schooling, good education. Over the years, we've done a number of clinics. It isn't something we do every year because you've got to have the right people to do it, and we, it just doesn't always work. And, of course, we give scholarships every year uh, to, to high school kids. Let's go back to the fundraising and, and just talk about major sponsors in particular because I know they play a big part in sustaining the program. Who are some of those major sponsors? Well, we have several. We have six or eight of them. Culver's uh, Foods and uh, Culver's Restaurant. Um, uh, Trilling True Value Hardware is up there now. Charter Communications is up there. Uh, Wyman Sports Center is up there. Kohler oh. helps us out. Um, Alliant helps us out. Pepsi Cola and Larry's Distributing is probably our number one sponsor. Right? I have to say that Larry's is our number one sponsor. And they have been for years. They're just a great, great company. All of these are Trilling and, mm -hmm. and Culver's and all, and they're just, we could get along without them. Well, I want to thank you for participating in the program. Uh, uh, it's deserving, and uh, we certainly hope that the Sheboygan A's continue as an organization for many, many years to come. We thanks will. a lot, Denny. I thank really you, appreciate Mike. it. With that, we're going to sign off. Thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you down the road. Denny Moyer uh, has meant more to the Sheboygan A's and baseball in Sheboygan, I think, than just about any groups or, or persons that you could ever combine. And to his credit, he's very receptive to new ideas and new thoughts, and, and uh, he is very, very uh, willing to listen to everybody's ideas. Denny was, uh, as he is now, but then even more so, uh, the real driving force behind everything. Truly, I don't think there would be baseball in Sheboygan if it wouldn't be for Denny. He has, does so much. If there's anybody that uh, gets credit uh, for the existence of the A's and probably for Wildwood Baseball Park, it would be Denny. He's everything. He, he is the program. Uh, Denny Moyer, without him, I don't know that there'd be a Sheboygan A's today. As a former player, I just want to say, hey, Denny, thank you for everything you've done. Um, it's been a great run, and uh, um, I appreciate everything you did, and I, I know all your players do too. I'd like to say, hey, thanks a lot, Denny. Good luck in the future, you and Donna, and the boys and the grandkids, and, and keep enjoying baseball. That's what you do best.